Yes, the crops grow high toward the sun in the sky when water is brought to the land. Water and soil and sunshine. These are the basic requirements for all forms of life on this earth of ours. If any one of the three is in short supply, the crops and livestock and people and countries cannot reach their peak of development. This is the story of a southern Nebraska community that grew up with its weather eye on the skies, always hoping for enough moisture to finish a crop, good soil and plenty of sunshine, but with its destiny tied to the rain clouds. We are talking about the rich agricultural area near Geneva, Nebraska, and the neighboring community around the city of York. Farmers and town folks and agricultural agencies in the area decided to do something other than wait for the rains to come. And today, a new prosperity, a new feeling of security has come to thousands of farm homes and to the community as a whole. Water is the key that is unlocking this new wealth. Water pumped from man-made or natural ponds. Water from streams delivered to crops whose thirst is never ending. Water that comes from wells drilled into an inexhaustible lake that lies 200 feet below the surface. Drilling outfits like this have sunk 2,000 wells in this southern Nebraska area in the last few years. There's always rejoicing when the pumps first prove the volume of water at the bottom of the hole. When the wells are proved, it's time to level the fields if flow irrigation is to be used. The powerful 820 tractor and Hancock scraper level the land at lowest possible cost. This is a gently rolling country where high spots can be cut off and spread into the low spots at low cost. When the carrier is full, the blade is raised hydraulically. The double bucket is tilted hydraulically. And the soil is deposited and spread at any desired thickness. And here is the way to finish the job of leveling. Use a land shaper that trims off the high spots, fills in the low. Let's watch this close-up action as the blade fills and empties more accurately than you can do it by hand. Notice the exclusive rear blade position, which assures minimum vertical movement of the blade when the rear tractor wheels pass over a hump in the field. Three-point suspension with wheels behind the blade practically eliminates side tilting assures a better job of finishing the fields. If feeder ditches are needed to carry the water from pump to field, they are made easily and quickly with this modern ditcher and a powerful 620 tractor. You can make ditches as deep as 24 inches, as wide as 60 inches with this outfit. It's the simple, low-cost way to make and maintain ditches for irrigation or drainage. If it's pasture or hayland that's to be irrigated, it pays to break up the hard pan with a pan breaker. Water penetrates faster and deeper, saturates the subsoil. This husky integral pan breaker penetrates as deep as 22 inches, cracking the hard pan and creating a reservoir that holds moisture longer, reduces frequency of irrigation. This corrugator is another aid to better irrigation of pastures, hayland, or fields. It makes well-packed furrows that carry the water around slopes, across the field, or holds it for even penetration. Water is brought to the land in many ways. A sprinkler system may offer the ideal way to irrigate. These systems may be installed permanently or built into huge portable sprinkler units. This particular one in a field near Henderson, Nebraska, covers about two and a half acres per sweep. Still bigger is this giant, the world's largest portable sprinkler, which covers five and one half acres with the sweep of its arms. Most farmers consider sprinkler irrigation as second choice because of the labor of moving pipe. Some say it has an advantage over other types because of the exactness with which water can be put down. A common method used in Nebraska is gravity or surface irrigation from a ditch. Basically, this dates back to the ancient Egyptians. But of course, the aluminum siphon tubes are new. Upkeep of the main ditch is cut to a minimum because of the tubes. 
The use of aluminum-gated pipe is a newer method of getting water to the crops, and it saves a lot of hard work. We're on the farm of Mr. Dave Broadwell. An 820 diesel powers one of the deep well pumps. One of his sons, Frank, is in the field. Say, Mr. Broadwell, we'd like to know what irrigation means to your family. Well, uh, that's easy to answer. It uh, generally means the difference between a good crop, uh, half a crop, or a third of a crop, or none at all. Back in 1955, we didn't irrigate uh, anything, and our crop amounted to absolutely nothing. Uh, that's when we decided to irrigate. We sank four wells uh, during the winter, and in 1956, we irrigated about 300 acres. Our uh, crop jumped from zero to 80 bushels to the acre. On the strength of that, we uh, drilled three more this year. Irrigation is genuine crop insurance to our family. Thank you, Mr. Broadwell. You're welcome. Let's take a look at just what we mean by crop insurance. Here is some unirrigated corn in Fillmore County. The year has been very good for dryland farmers because rainfall is above average. But even so, this corn is beginning to show signs of insufficient moisture at tasseling time when it's most needed. Compare the last scene with this field of corn. They're both in the same county, about three miles apart. It's the same soil, the same sunshine, the same weather, but here water has been added. Irrigation has been the key to growth, and this corn promises to make 100 bushels per acre. Look at the record. Fillmore County statistics show that for unirrigated corn, the average yield hit an all-time low in 1934 of one bushel per acre. The best recorded year was in 1920. The yield rose to 38 bushels per acre. On irrigated corn, the story is different. The lowest recorded average occurred in 1951. It was 53 bushels per acre. The highest average was reached in 1956, an impressive 74 bushels to the acre. Some of the irrigation water in Fillmore County comes from the Blue River. It's pumped by smaller engines like this new John Deere four-cylinder 40 horsepower model. Say, gentlemen, are you the two O'Connor brothers? Yes, I'm Paul and this is Ralph. Glad we found you. We'd like to hear about your experiences with irrigation. Sure. Back in 1954, we started pumping from the Blue River with a different booster pump, of course. Since then, we've added a well each year. We have 350 irrigated acres, mostly corn and milo. It's all flood irrigation. Each year, we level some more land and eventually hope to have our entire 800 acres under control. Irrigation is really profitable, too, when you stop to think that our average corn yield was 19 bushel before, and now it has jumped to 98 bushel. Sure has. It's little wonder we're so enthusiastic about irrigation. It's a part of modern farming. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Another source of irrigation water is the pond. This one on the farm of Guy Brown, Jr. has supplied water for a number of summers. Ponds, like streams and rivers, are an economical source of water. But there's always the possibility they will dry up when most needed. On George Brown's farm, a new John Deere six-cylinder engine, which develops about 60 horsepower, is connected to a six-inch deep well pump. It has ample reserve power to operate under continuous load conditions and lots of built-in stamina to prevent costly breakdowns. This is the growing season when water is most needed, and dependable pumping engines ensure an ample supply. There are many ways to pump water for the crops. Some prefer an electric motor, but the operating costs are higher. This is another version of the deep well, ditch, and siphon tube method of irrigation. This farmer is moving the tubes and starting them again. The experts call it pumping the tube. Water, water everywhere, and more than the crops can drink. 1,500 gallons of it every minute from a 156-foot well and 10-inch pump. The farm is owned by Dave H. Epp, 
That's his son making one of the three daily inspections of tractor and pump. It runs day and night, and the flat belt drive has proved very satisfactory. Mr. Epp told us, and we quote, I pump 90,000 gallons of water an hour with my 720 LP for 30 cents. Yes, 90,000 gallons is a lot of water, and 30 cents per hour puts the cost at rock bottom. A good crop of milo like this, raised at such low cost, is a real profit maker. Here's another good crop of milo, this one being grown for certified seed on the Lauber Brothers farm. Mr. Lauber, we hear that you've been irrigating for years. Yes, I have. I've been, was one of the first to irrigate here in Fillmore County. My first well went down way back in 1938. It was a shallow well and we used open ditch methods only. Through the years, we have gradually improved our methods and switched to deep wells, the gated pipe and sprinkler system. By the way, you know I have been retired for a number of years, so why not let me call one of my two sons to come over here and finish the story. Wendell, come over here a minute, please. Wendell, I've been telling these gentlemen about how we got started in irrigation. Will you finish the story for them? Sure, Dad. We grow and sell certified seed, and the first planting each year just has to grow. That's why we irrigate throughout the growing season. We irrigate regularly, and uh, not the supplemental treatment that some people use. We make it a full-time job. In fact, I don't think we could stay in business if it wasn't for the good supply of water we have. Do you, Dad? No, I don't, son. Water and irrigation are a necessary part of our lives. They are the basis of our economic structure. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Today, Fillmore County is still only one-third irrigated. This milo is being grown on unirrigated land, and you can almost see it begging for water. Look at the difference. This field has been irrigated from the start. Moving these two fields side by side, fields that were photographed within minutes of each other, we can readily see the difference, a difference that water alone can make. But is there an end to this water, this liquid gold that's stored under the surface? Mr. Ivan Lindstrom, the Fillmore County agent, says that engineering and geological tests in the area show that the water table has remained about the same, and in a few rare instances has risen as much as one and one-tenth inches. During the last 15 years, the number of wells in Fillmore County has grown from five to more than 500. Yet during all that time, there has been no appreciable change in the level of the water table. One big job with siphon tubes is checking them regularly to see that they keep flowing. One York County farmer, Mr. John Delft, has solved the problem in a very modern way. He has turned hours of walking the ditches into minutes of riding them. Mr. Dell, we understand that you're one of the old timers in the field of irrigation. Will you tell us about it? Well, I'm not so old, but I've been irrigating about as long as anyone else in this part of the country. A uh, matter of fact, I was one of the first ones to sink an irrigation well in York County. People wondered whether I'd make it in those days. Same as they questioned my judgment when I hauled in the first bag of fertilizer. They're all doing it now, and I've watched irrigation take over the county, same as I've watched farming methods improve. Irrigation has brought prosperity to York County, and I believe we couldn't exist without it. But now you've got to excuse me, fellas. I've got to go and check some more of these siphon tubes. We sure will, Mr. Dell. And thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. This story of success with irrigation, told by the people who live with it, is abundant proof of the ability of men and machines to meet the challenge of nature when the rains are not plentiful. For these communities in south central Nebraska, irrigation is security and the key to prosperity. Nature provides more than enough water for everyone, but it takes the ingenuity of man to put it in the right place at the right time. <laughs>